All right, so we are in consumer math. Um, we're on lesson 1 4 today. I'm really just kind of skipping around into random stuff that are related to banking and stuff. Um, today's date is Monday, August 31st, 2020. And as I said before, if you guys have any topics that you really want to learn about that are kind of related to this or are very pressing in your life, let me know. We'll talk about it. Um, yeah, digital payments. We need to learn the different options for paying online. Um, so quick poll. Let me go ahead and just look at your cameras. Quick poll. How many of you, and I might need to see your camera, Josie. Um, how many of you, by raise of hands, have used some form of electronic payment, be it with your parents or something like I've used Amazon or bought something online, paid for something online using your phone, any sort of online payment? Have you ever done it? So no for Jenny, no for Anna. Oh, Anna's a yes. Jenny, never. No for Josie. Interesting. Okay. And how many of you have your own form of payment online? Like I have my own Amazon account. I have my own PayPal account. How many of you have your own stuff to pay online? Or is it no? You're all using your parents' stuff? No. Okay. So I think this will be a valuable lesson then for most of us because this is going to be in the near future. Maybe like within the year, you're going to be doing a bit of this stuff. So let's start with where everyone typically like has our entry point for digital payments, which is Venmo. Um, and I guess I should share my screen again, huh? Venmo. Um, and I'm still looking at your cameras, so Josie, please leave it on. Give me a thumbs up, thumbs down type of thing. Have you ever heard of Venmo? Heard of it? And have you ever used Venmo? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Interesting, okay, cool. So. What is Venmo? And then we can have discussions about should you use it, should you not. But Venmo, it's just a, um, you can use it online. It's like a, it's a mobile slash web based payment system. I cannot write payment system. And um, in terms of who owns Venmo, it's not super important, but I mean, it was acquired by Braintree in like 2012, somewhere around there, but it's currently owned by PayPal. So it's kind of interesting. So owned by PayPal, which is interesting. And again, it's, I don't know if you're, I'm talking over your heads. It's really hard to assess all this stuff. As a math teacher, I've had you like sometimes for four years in a row. So I'm like, oh, you've definitely learned about like linear functions, but I have to test this every time. Have you ever heard of PayPal? Have you heard of PayPal? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Leave your cameras on. Have you heard of PayPal? Okay, so PayPal um, is an online form of payment, but it's it basically has the same feature as Venmo of sending and receiving money, but they operate slightly differently. But it's interesting that they're two different applications um, that you can like install on your phone and stuff and two different websites that you would go to, yet they almost do the same thing. Um, and that's how acquisitions work, right? Like I'm a company and I'm really good at doing this thing. Oh, here's a new startup and oh, they're doing something a little bit differently than me and doing a really good job. I have enough money, I'm gonna buy them and now I own them and I'm still the best person in the business at doing what I do, right? So owned by PayPal, and what is it used for? You can transfer, and it's just, yeah, I guess we'll say transfer money. It's that type of thing where you like feel around on your pockets, you're like, shoot, I don't have my wallet, but I have my phone um, here. I need some chips, can you buy those chips for me? And I send you $5. Um, but what are things to be wary of for Venmo? Um, thing, things that you might not want to use Venmo for. So if you, and I guess this is kind of universal for all online payments, those online payments need to somehow be connected to your bank account, to your credit card, to some form of money. Um, so maybe you should have talked about that before, but um, we'll say, we'll say it right here, I guess. So like all forms of online payment, It needs to be connected to one of the following things down here. So it needs to be connected to 
um, some sort of bank account. And um, sometimes that bank account is gonna be like typically your, your savings, checking, something like that. Savings, checking. And I guess technically credit cards are part of your bank account, but sometimes you can have just a, a credit card with no savings account and it's a slightly different <coughs> login. So I'm gonna go ahead and classify it as a, a separate thing. So I'm gonna say bank account, I'll say like credit card. Something to pay money with. Um, and those are typically the only things that they allow because those are the only things that make sense. Yeah, so you're gonna, when I say connected, um, like when you first open up the application or go to their website and you enter in all of your information, my name is John Smith. Um, at the very end, they'll be like, okay, well, what's your bank account? And you have to look up all that information. Um, and typically speaking, you'll have two numbers. One is the bank's number, like my name is Wells Fargo. Or my name is... Bank of America, and there's a certain number that goes with that. And then there's a second number, which is your account within that bank account. And that's just your, I think there's names for them. We'll get into that. I think tomorrow's a good day to talk about how to write checks and stuff like that, where those numbers are. But um, yeah, those numbers are entered into these online forms of payment. Um, okay, so things to be careful of. So we'll say this is the, the careful. And this is gonna be kind of a recurring theme throughout today. <laughs> and maybe the entire class, <laughs> be careful of credit cards. If you have to make one general assumption in this class is that credit cards are bad. They're good in tiny ways if you know how to use them, but in, and if you're in like really dire situations, they're really good. But generally speaking, credit cards you don't want to use unless you really know what's going on. So if you're in this class and you don't know how to use credit cards, stop. After this class, you now have permission. You have my authority to go ahead and get yourself a credit card. But I mean, some people are like, I'm going to stay away from credit cards. And to those people, kudos, you're staying safe and you're never going to get um, in all these pitfalls you might be in. So um, whenever you use a credit card and you use that to pay someone using Venmo, not only do you get all the fees that apply to the credit card, but you also get fees on Venmo as well. And what are those fees? It's not that bad. It's a 3% it's a fee per transaction, 3% per transaction. Um, what does that mean? Like 3% of your money per transaction or like? 3% um, uh, per, so like, let, let's make it a more concrete example, right? 3% like of what? Of your money that you're sending. So like, okay. let's say I'm going to, um, I don't know, what is a hamburger about $10? Let's say we're going to buy a $10 hamburger, $10 burger. And you, Anna, don't have ten dollars on me on you, um, but you do have Venmo. So you're going to say, "Hey, Mr. Snell, can you buy me a burger? I'll pay you back with Venmo." And be like, "Oh yeah, sure." Because to me, that's not—it's free for me. Like I'm not going to lose any money on that. You're going to give me those ten dollars, but unfortunately, you only have a credit card. You could have linked it to your debit card, but you linked it to your credit card and you paid me ten dollars. What happens? You are actually paying Venmo ten. So $10 burger, um, this is Venmo. In terms of Venmo, you, Anna, will now have to spend, and I totally assumed it was Anna talking. I, I was not looking at, was it Anna or Luria? I can't really tell the voices apart. Luria, but... As Luria. Okay, sorry, Anna. Sorry, Luria. So you, Luria, are going to pay $10, which is going to go to Mr. Sindel for paying for your burger, but you also have to pay 3% to Venmo. So 3% of $10, and then we can do that mathematically, right? So mathematically what we're doing is we're doing 0 0.03, which is 3% as a decimal, and we're gonna multiply that by $10, and that's 30 cents. So it's 0 0.30, it's 30 cents, and that goes to Venmo. Okay. So they charge you 30 cents just for paying me $10 for the burger. So even though you transferred $10, if you look at your credit card statement, which again is when we get more into just purely credit cards, we'll talk about how to look at your statements. What do those things mean? 
And then, oh, we get to choose our own credit cards for this class too. And the credit card that we choose is not going to be locked in anything. But like, if you had to choose a credit card, which one would you choose? But anyway, um, yeah, 30, you'll see a charge for $10.30 on Venmo. $10 of which was transferred to me, 30 cents Venmo gets to keep for them. So that's the thing that you have to be warned about. Um, but if you use a debit card or a banking account, most of the things that like, if you already have the money, then yeah, like it's free for you to use. So most of the Venmo is pretty nice. Like the entire transaction is free. Say I, I no, let's keep using you, Luria, as a example. Let's say you link your debit card. And your debit card just means it's linked to your savings account or your, your uh, it's typically your, not your savings account, it's usually your, um, your checking account. So your checking account, um, and then you pay me $10, it's free for you, entirely free. I get $10 as a complete transaction and it happens instantaneously. The only trouble is now that money is in Venmo and if I need to transfer it back to my banking account, I use Wells Fargo. So if I transfer that money back to me, it takes a little bit of time to actually be on Wells Fargo. I think it's like one to three days or something like that. Um, but everything is free. So we'll come down here and say, that's the, the nice thing. What's nice about it? Um, if linked to debit card slash bank account, it's all free. All is free. Everything is free. The only thing that you have to, again, it's kind of inconvenient that if you want to transfer it back to your bank account, like maybe you need to write a check for your rent or something. Typically rent is through checks and stuff, which is the only time I ever write checks nowadays. Um, although that's not true anymore either. It used to be back in the day, like when I was in college, you always had to write out a check for your rent. Maybe you don't have enough money in your bank account because you have like $200 in Venmo. You have to make a transfer from Venmo to your bank account to make sure that you, you don't have a, your check that bounces, which is a fancy word of saying, there's not enough money for you to write that check. Um, it takes a few days for Venmo to transfer that money. So if you need to do it instantly, that's another thing that you have to be careful about. Okay. We'll come back down here and say careful again. Careful. Takes one to three days for transfer back to, we'll say a bank account. And that might be changed in the future. This is recorded in 2020 and they might change that to really quick. And another thing is sometimes you need it quick. Like I need it like within half an hour because rent is due at midnight and it's 1130 right now. I need to transfer it now. They do have an option in Venmo. And basically when I say Venmo, I'm really talking about PayPal. I'm really talking about Braintree, Skrill. Like there's, there's gotta be like a hundred different alternatives to Venmo that are basically the same in a slightly different package. And they all have this option, which is a, an, they're called instant transfers. It's still in this category of being careful. So be careful of instant transfers. If you need to instantly transfer it back to your bank account, then they're going to charge you 1% of whatever that transaction fee is. And the reason why it's a lower percent is because it's typically going to be a bigger amount of money. You're not going to transfer a, a measly $2 back to your bank account because why would you even do that? You're typically going to be transferring like hundreds of dollars back to your bank account because you need to pay for rent. All right. I don't know. Something else It's typically rent. Inst wow. Did I really spell instant? Why is there a T S there? So instant transfer is 1%. And at least for Venmo currently, um, it's going to be a minimum payment of 25 cents. So 25 cent minimum. And they do have a maximum too. It's a $10 maximum. Which means after $1,000, it's the same amount of money to transfer. So... Yeah, the, the two main things to take away, it's free as long as it's not connected to a credit card and it takes a little bit of time to transfer back to your bank. All right, so questions on Venmo. Has have anyone have like 
oh, you forgot to cover this about Venmo. There are like extra things that you'll eventually learn that I don't think it's worthwhile covering in terms of like the security, like you have to enter the person's phone number and stuff like that. Um, but once you get those things set up, it's pretty easy. I think they also have like a QR code that you can scan and then like, oh, you actually know that person. They, they just want to try to avoid scams of like, I'm going to transfer $2,000 from this account to this account because I grabbed my friend's phone and ha ha ha, I took their money. They are careful about that. Um, oh shoot, I did remember another thing. So the reason that you don't see Venmo as like a, an option for online commerce, like e-commerce sites like um, eBay or Amazon, there's no Venmo button, right? You've never... I don't know how much you guys do online shopping. There's no Venmo button. Why? And the answer is there's no buyer or seller protection. Like for example, if the, the buyer got the package, but they're like, Oh, I never got the package. And they're like hiding it behind their back, but they actually got it. They can, there's, there's no protection. And then um, the buyer will be like out of that money. They'll have to give it back to them or something like that. Like there's no, no protection at all. I don't know if that's an actual example. I should have researched that first, but we'll also say the thing they have to be careful of is there's no buyer slash seller protection. Mm -hmm. I would think in the real world, this is more of the, the seller protection. Like if the seller gave the money to the person to send out the package, the seller could be like, eh, thanks for the money, bud. But no, nah, I'm not going to give it to you. Stuff like that. Um, so what are other names for Venmo? The other alternatives, if you don't want to use Venmo and Venmo, uh, in my opinion, it's probably the better one just because it's so free. As long as you set it up correctly, don't set it up with your uh, credit card. Um, let's do alternatives, alternatives to Venmo, some of which I've never heard of. Um, the big one is like PayPal, which is I think basically entirely free, kind of like the same system. Um, PayPal, the only difference is you can set up a business with PayPal. So it's more geared towards people that actually want to sell stuff. And there is buyer and seller protection because it is meant for like actually selling a large amount of stuff online. Uh, but then they charge a certain amount for, well, let's just put a side note for PayPal. Like if you're a business and you're using PayPal, and this is, <laughs> this is the class that G I'm sure Gio wanted to know all this stuff too, because Gio set up his own business too. I think Jaden is currently, isn't he selling stickers or something? Does anyone know what is Jaden doing? He's doing some sort of business. He has an ice cream shop, I think. That's an ice cream shop. Okay. I wonder what he's using for money handling. If he's using paper money, he doesn't have to worry about all this stuff. But like if you're a business and you want to use PayPal, then they're going to charge you, what is it like? It, it really depends on how much money you make per month. It's anywhere between 1.9% to 3.4% of all of your money is going to go to PayPal, which if you think about it, like I make um, even like a thousand dollars a month and I pay 1.9%, that's going to be 0 0.019 times a thousand you have to give them $19 a month if you're making a thousand dollars and typically you're going to be making more than that. Like what happens if you make $10,000? Yeah. Well, I guess it's still not that much. $190. You have to give. Sorry about that. My microphone went off. Yeah. But if you paid with cash, you wouldn't lose any of that money. Right. Um, so other alternatives, um, there's, um, Braintree, Braintree, which is much, much less free. I think each transaction is going to cost almost like 3% or something like that. There's Skrill. And I, I don't, I don't want to make an exhaustive list here. You can just literally Google alternatives to Venmo and then these are all going to pop up and you can figure out which one you like more than the other. But typically you guys should all go with Venmo if you have to. Um, just be careful though. Like you need to have good phone security if you're going to have Venmo on your phone, because again, if your friend steals a phone and then they get into your Venmo, they can transfer money to whoever they want. So another thing to be careful of in terms of your phone security. Um, as a general rule of thumb, have your phone password protected. Even if it's a dumb, simple password, just make it password protected. Um, I want to talk about, um, Apple pay and Google pay and stuff like that also. I guess I should stop here. Does, does anyone have any questions before I move on? No questions. Okay. So 
Let's talk about Apple Pay. Those are all ways to transfer money to. So Venmo is a transfer service. These are now ways to, to pay businesses. So we'll say pay business, businesses. And we've already talked about PayPal. So we'll say PayPal, that's just like a button. PayPal, oh my gosh, I'm having weird lag. Like I'm not, my hands are in the air and it's still writing. I haven't touched it yet. We've already talked about PayPal. Yikes, what's going on? Um, what other alternatives are there for a business that you can link your credit cards to? There's like Apple Pay. Um, I should note that Apple Pay, that's only for iOS devices. So if you have an Android or if you have a Windows machine or if you have a Garmin watch, all those things are gonna be incompatible with Apple Pay. They're only for Apple watches. They're only for um, iPhones, stuff like that, iOS devices. You have like Google Pay. These are all different than the previous ones. Oh my gosh, I'm already out of time. What the heck? Okay, these are all different just because there is buyer and seller protection. So I'll say here, there is buyer, and mainly for you guys, seller protection. Sorry, you're the buyer. You're mainly buyer protection. Man, that's crazy. I feel like I have like half of my material that I got through. Okay, whatever. Um, I want to talk about contactless cards too, maybe another day. Um, what do you guys think? Do you think in the near future you're ever going to use Venmo? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Venmo? You kind of have to have a smartphone too. If you have a flip phone or no phone, then you can't really use it. Um, I used to use it to pay rent like to, for my roommates and stuff, like we, they only want one check, they don't want three checks, so all of our roommates would go and Venmo one person and then that one person would send in the check, so super, super efficient. Um, but yeah, that's all I have for today. That's the end of the notes and make sure that you have a quick little summary at the end, just a one or two bullet points, um, and then make sure that these notes are uploaded to Google Slides. And if some of you have been uploading pictures as attachments, make sure the picture is actually in the Google Slides. Um, that's all I have for you guys. You guys are dismissed. I'll see you guys tomorrow.